One of the main purposes of meditation is to get you more sensitive to what your mind is doing while you're doing it, and also to see the results of what you've done, so you can gauge what needs to be changed. This ability to reflect on your actions is really central to the practice. This is how the Buddha himself gained awakening. He would follow a practice for a while and then look at the results and ask himself, is this what I want? And when it didn't come up to his standards, he went back and looked at his actions. Okay, what am I doing wrong? What could I change? This ability to reflect is useful in all aspects of the practice. We learn it in the meditation, but also we should learn it in our daily actions, in reference to our daily actions. We're talking today about the tendency to get overly pressured as you're working on a project. And a lot of it comes from the fact that the mind believes that if you don't put a lot of pressure on yourself, the work won't get done or won't get done well. And when the project succeeds, that part of the mind says, look, see, it succeeded because I put so much pressure on you and it's going to put pressure on you again. So you have to learn how to observe yourself to see how much pressure actually is useful and how much is wasted effort and how much actually gets in the way of doing things well. And to some extent, simply looking back on your actions will help. But if you're not present for your actions while you're doing them, you're not really going to know. So the meditation teaches you to be more present. At the same time, it teaches you to still things down in the mind as much as you can. So you can detect what those actions are. When the Buddha teaches alertness, it's not just generally being aware of the present moment. It's being specifically aware of what you're doing, what the results are. So like right now, you're sitting focused on the breath. Is it going well? Are you actually with the breath? If not, what can you change? You can either change the breath or you can change the way you're focused. In other words, the changes can be either in the body or in the mind. And what are your range of options? Some of these you've learned from the past. Others you may want to think up right now. How are you relating to the body? What's your perception of the body? Where are you in the body? Could you be someplace else? Could you hold a different perception in mind? What about the breath? How are you perceiving it and how does it feel? When you adjust the breath, what do you do? Are you putting pressure on it to adjust it or are you simply posing a thought in mind? Just saying longer and see how the body responds. Which of those is working for you? There's a lot of leeway here for your individual preferences, your individual way of relating your mind to your body. And these are things you have to learn by exploring. But it's also good to have someone you can talk these things over with, to get some ideas you may not have thought of before, or to open up some possibilities that might not have occurred to you, or to be a little bit more demanding in your sense of what you want, or sometimes less demanding. Sometimes we put unrealistic ideals on ourselves for how the mind should be when it gets down to the concentration. If you've been hearing about people gaining a sense of light in their concentration and wonder where your light is, you may try to force it and get upset when you don't get the light. Well, it's good to know that light doesn't happen to everybody. So in your case, you may want to look for other signs to indicate that the mind is actually settling down. Is there a sense of well-being, a sense of being settled here? If there is, okay, that's good enough to hold on to for the time being. Then the question is, how do you protect what you've got? Because all too often there's the tendency, if you don't like the concentration you have, you just step on it and try something else. And the potential you had for getting the mind to settle down with that first state of concentration just gets killed. So you need a sense of how to judge things, how to look at your actions, how to look at the results, and connect the actions to the results. As John Lee said, 
if you see an action but don't see the result, that's not really insight. Or if you get in a mind state but you can't remember what you did to bring it about, that's not really insight. You have to see the results connected to the actions, the actions connected to the results. That's when you really understand things. So learn to reflect on what you're doing right now as you're doing it. And that'll make it easier at the end of the meditation to reflect on when things were going really well, what have you done? Can you do that the next time around? Sometimes you've, it's taken you the halfway through the meditation session before things finally fall together. Well, do they have to wait till halfway the next time? Can you bring them together more quickly the next time, having observed what the breath was like, what the mind was like when they were together well? Or are you afraid that if you get the mind really concentrated at the beginning of the hour, you're not going to know what to do with the rest of the hour? No question that. Because all you have to do is get it there and then have some patience in keeping it there. And of course, the voices will come up in the mind and say, this is getting boring, nothing's happening, where are the insights, where's the whatever. And you can tell yourself, I'm just looking for a state of mind that I can maintain, just see how long you can ride with it. Because the longer you can ride with it, the more you're going to see. You've got things stilled in the mind. It's like trying to listen to a very subtle sound off in the distance. If you've got a lot of noise in your immediate surroundings, you're not going to hear it. So you've got to calm things down. You have to make yourself really quiet and get rid of all their extraneous noise. So as you're meditating, getting the mind quiet here with the breath, that's what you're doing. You're getting rid of the extraneous noise in the mind so you can see more precisely what you're doing, what the results are, where your intentions are right now. What happens when you carry th those attentions through? So when you come out of the meditation, one, as I said, you want to reflect on how the meditation went. And then as you leave meditation, you want to look at what the mind picks up as it leaves. And learn to see that as strange. We live with our normal level of pressure in the mind, our normal conversations in the mind, and everything seems very normal and taken for granted. And often we can't imagine what the mind would be like without that particular level of pressure and type of conversation. But if you can see it as strange, you can pick up on times when you're just piling unnecessary stress on yourself, or you're beating yourself up over something that's really not worth it, or whatever the unskillful attitude is. You'll see it more clearly as you come out of a state of stillness. This makes you more sensitive to the ordinary workings of the mind and see that they don't have to be there. At the very least, it gives you a sense, okay, things can be changed, things could be different. And sometimes you'll have some insights into precisely what it is that's weighing the mind down unnecessarily. And you can see that you don't have to go there, there's an alternative. When you can see the alternative, that's when you really benefit. You're putting the mind in a better place to judge things. Without this sense of stillness, this sense of well-being that comes from the stillness, the mind is going to be hungry and it's going to be noisy. So we're feeding the mind on good food, good feelings, good contact with the contact of the breath with the rest of the elements in the body, the feelings of ease and well-being and rapture that come as a result, and the intentions to keep you here. These are all healthy forms of food for the mind. And as you get more and more used to health food for the mind, then you see the mind is beginning to go back to junk food again. You'll notice it. You're changing your diet. And at first the mind is strongly inclined to go back to its old diet. But as it stays with the new diet over time, its sense of what's healthy inside is going to change. Its sense of what's normal inside is going to change. And you realize you have a lot of alternatives that you might not have thought of before. So reflect on your actions while you're concentrating, as you're coming out of concentration. Reflect on your meditation. Reflect on what you're picking up as you leave concentration. And this will help you reflect on all the other issues going on in your life, the 
the way you approach a project, and the way you learn how to handle it in a way that's not placing unnecessary pressure on yourself, unnecessary stress, so you can do the work that you have to do in the world more efficiently, and the mind will have more strength left over to deal with the other issues that come up, because there are a lot of things that are going on in life that have nothing to do with the projects we're assigned or the projects we take on. We've got our greed, aversion, and delusion in the background. And if you put all your energy into focusing on your project, the greed, aversion, and delusion get to run rampant. They might stay within the bounds of the project that needs to be done, but as soon as the project is, let, is accomplished or you feel that you can let up a little bit, they come in and take over. If you've been expending a lot of strength on that project, then you wouldn't have the strength to deal with these things. So you need to have a little reserve of strength to keep these things at bay even when the outside pressure is off or the internalized pressure gets calmed down. So again, the meditation is useful for giving you strength and you want to learn how to bring as much as you can of this sense of being here, present, alert, ardent and mindful, centered in the body, because that makes you a much better judge of what you're doing and how it can be improved.